What's up YouTube? I hope each and every one of you guys are healthy and enjoying life today. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the 2024 Lincoln Navigator Black Label Special Edition. Huge thank you to Thomas Proctor over at Ted Britt Lincoln of Chantilly, Virginia for allowing me to do this video for you guys today. If you are interested in this particular Navigator or any Lincoln product, then I'll be sure to have Thomas's information on screen as well as in the description box down below. But with that said, let's get into the video. Well, it is windy again, but at least it is sunny and 65, so I can put up with it for today. But just like usual, first I'm gonna talk about the exterior and the performance. So like I said, this is a 2024 Lincoln Navigator Black Label Special Edition. And this particular one has been painted in the optional $750 pristine white metallic. I wanted to preface this video by saying for 2024, Lincoln made full-time four-wheel drives standard on all of the Navigator models, no matter which trim level you get. Other than that, nothing much has changed with the black label. But this one being the black label, as standard, you get LED adaptive pixel projector headlights with high beam assist, as well as LED day turning lights, LED turn signals, and LED fog lights. But taking a step to the left, this one's been optioned with the $6,695 special edition package, which up here at the front end gives you the gloss black mesh grill with the chrome grill surround. Here's a closer view of that. You also, with the black label as standard, get the illuminating Lincoln logo at the center of your grill. And then at the bottom of your Lincoln logo, you may notice that you get a forward facing camera. And that is because the black label comes standard with a 360 degree view camera system. But coming down just a little bit, you get gloss black lower and outer grills. This is your lower grill. These are your outer grills. And I will give you a closer view of what those look like now. And then again, with the special edition package, you also get this chrome trim piece right here. And then all the way at the bottom of your front bumper, you get the gloss black lower fascia with six integrated parking sensors as standard. I'll take a step back, give you a view of what this thing looks like from about here. And then I also wanted to mention that with the black label, you get 9.6 inches of ground clearance. But Coming down around the side, also as standard with this trim level, you get the adaptive suspension with road preview. So when you're driving down the road, let's say the vehicle sees a pothole, it's basically going to loosen up the suspension at the optimal time to give you a better ride over that pothole. Whereas if it didn't have the road preview, it wouldn't be reading the road ahead of you and adjusting uh, ahead of time for those bumps. So pretty cool. Uh, and you can definitely feel it in action because this thing is one of the smoothest vehicles that I've driven uh, to date. But coming down just a little bit, I apologize if you don't get the best view of these wheels. I'll try to give you the best view of these wheels. Uh, but again, with the special edition package, you also get these 22 inch gloss black wheels that are wrapped in 285-45 Pirelli Scorpion Verde all season tires. I will give you a view of the tread pattern on these tires here real quick. That is what the tread pattern looks like. And then I also really do like the way that these wheels look and the way that the gloss black wheels match to this pristine white paint. I think I love the panda theme, you know what I mean? I'll show you on the interior a little drawing of a panda, but this is panda, panda, panda. You guys know that song. Uh, this is literally the panda. But coming on down the side, you can see you get the navigator fender and door badging with the chrome navigator lettering. You get some gloss black trim at the top and then you get the chrome trim on the bottom. I also wanted to mention that uh, as standard, you do get rain sensing wipers and with the special edition package, you get the black painted roof, the black mirror caps and the black roof rails. That is what you get up here. Uh, so you can see you get that two-tone. I think it looks awesome in my personal opinion. Uh, but anyways, moving into our side view mirrors with the special edition package. Again, you get the gloss black mirror caps, but as standard, you get the integrated turn signals. These side view mirrors are heated, power folding. The driver side mirror is auto dimming. You also get memory function. So not only is it going to memorize your seat settings, your steering wheel settings, it is also going to memorize your side view mirror settings as well, which is very convenient if you have multiple people driving this vehicle. You also get your blind spot monitoring on the upper left hand side of your driver side mirror and on the upper right hand side of your passenger side mirror. And then coming to the bottom of your side view mirrors about right there, you get a camera and that camera works with your 360 degree view camera system. And last but not least, right here, you have a puddle light, which is basically going to illuminate the area in which you step into and out of at night. So that is a nice little feature. And all of that again comes standard with the black label. So if you aren't catching the drift, 
the black label pretty much gives you everything as standard uh, technology wise safety wise and you'll see that as we progress throughout this video but anyways you also do get the black shark fin antenna between the front driver and the front passenger which is mounted on the roof there now let me give you another little side profile shot of the black label special edition so i already mentioned with the special edition you get the black painted roof the black roof rails but coming down just a little bit one thing i find kind of interesting is that at the bottom of all of your windows you get the satin chrome window trim i would have expected that to be gloss black but there are a couple little uh, you know chrome pieces here on the exterior that kind of help to break up the gloss black uh, and i think they're nice little touches in my personal opinion for a luxury suv like this but anyways you also do get body color door handles with keyless access and you get a little chrome strip on all four of your door handles as well coming down just a little bit more you get some chrome trim towards the bottom of your doors and then as standard with the black label you get the power running boards that are illuminating by the way and one thing that's pretty cool is that this vehicle has lincoln embrace so when you walk up to the vehicle the welcome lights will come on and they'll kind of start at the center and then work their way out uh, that is basically turning on the daytime running lights and then also if you come up to the vehicle from like walking over there and you walk up to it these will come out before you even walk up to the vehicle which is again a nice little piece with the lincoln embrace and then behind your fuel door you get a capless filler neck and 87 octane will do you just fine with this thing let me give you a rear three quarter shot of the black label that's what she looks like from the rear three-quarter angle led tail lights obviously do come standard with this thing i also wanted to point out that you have your upper brake light up top here that is led you get a rear window defroster obviously you have your rear wiper this upper glass piece also opens you just got to come to about right here you press on this button and the upper glass will open up so basically you could uh, you know have your dog breathe if you're driving around the beach and stuff like that and then also with the special edition package you get the black lincoln lettering back here but the outline of the lincoln lettering is in chrome i love the led light bar you get some chrome trim you have your backup camera right here and you also do get a power lift gate as standard all you got to do is have your key fob in your pocket or the vehicle unlocked and you press that button there and the power lift gate will begin to open up and then this is not the L, this isn't the Navigator L, this is the standard Navigator. Um, so this is the amount of room that you get from the seat back to the trunk opening. I'd say you probably get about you know, a foot and a half of storage space. However, let's say you're not riding around with your third row passengers. If you come over to here and you press on this button, that is going to drop your third row seats. So you can drop the third row seats from back here. You can also raise the third row seats from back here, which is nice. So obviously you can see with those third row seats dropped, you probably get an additional about four feet of storage space. Um, so you can carry around all of your kids equipment if they're going to practice and stuff like that. You get a 12 volt power outlet here on the passenger side of the trunk. You get this little grocery bag hook on both sides. And then also you can drop the second row seats by pressing on that button right there. You can also drop them individually as uh, same thing with the third row. You can raise and lower the third row seats. So you can either raise and lower from the three L which is left or the three R which is right. So now I'm raising up that side, but I do want to raise up both sides. So I'm just going to press that button in the middle and both sides will raise uh, with your third row seat. So I think that is pretty cool. You can see the seats are beginning to raise. You can power raise and lower the third row seats. You can only lower the second row seats. And then you also get a little bit more storage space underneath all of this stuff. So if you pull up on this, you get a little bit of storage space there. And then if you open that up, that is where you will find your jack. And you also get a little storage cubby right about there. You could set some gloves or something like that. But pressing on that button, that is going to lower your power lift gate. And let's finish things off here at the back end, shall we? So just like the front, the rear mirrors the front. So you get six parking sensors back here as well. You get a gloss black rear valence right here. Um, and then this one's been optioned with the $2,600 heavy duty trailer tow package, which gives you the class four hitch, the electronic limited slip differential and everything else you can read on screen. Before I get into the max tow capacity, you also get your spare tire underneath here. 
you have your dual exit exhaust on the passenger side of this. You get a 373 rear axle ratio and the max tow capacity with the Shorty Navigator is 8,300 pounds. If you did get the Navigator L, which is uh, the longer version of this, you get a max tow capacity of 8,100 pounds. But I love the way that the Panda looks. I think it looks sweet. If you're comparing this to the Escalade, after you finish watching this video, I also do have a video with an Escalade Sport Platinum that you could check out if you wanted to. But with that stuff out of the way, let's move into performance. Popping open that hood reveals the three and a half liter twin turbo V6 that makes 440 horsepower and 510 pound feet of torque. It is mated to a 10 speed automatic transmission for a zero to 60 time in 5.3 seconds. And if you are wondering about fuel economy, you can achieve 16 miles per gallon in the city, 22 miles per gallon on the highway for 18 miles per gallon combined with standard four wheel drive. I did want to compare this to the Escalade real quick because the Escalade makes 420 horsepower and 460 pound feet of torque and also gets a little bit worse fuel economy than this. So if you're going for a little bit more power, a little bit better fuel economy, you may want to look into getting the Navigator Black Label. But if you're enjoying the video so far today, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button. I'm on my journey to 100,000 subscribers and I cannot reach my goal without your support. So if you're enjoying the video, if you've learned anything from the video, please just take a second to like, comment, and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. But with that stuff out of the way, let's move into the interior. Moving on into the interior, as mentioned earlier in the video, you do get keyless access. So all you have to do is have your key fob in your pocket, walk up to the vehicle, put your hand behind the door handle and it will unlock. You can also lock the vehicle by running your finger across these four hash marks right here and now the vehicle is locked. You can also unlock and or lock the vehicle by remembering your key code, typing in the key code that will unlock the vehicle. And then if you wanted to lock it back up, you'd press the seven, eight and nine oh buttons simultaneously and that will lock it back up. Going over a couple of the functions on the key fob, starting from the top, you have your unlock function, your lock function, your remote start function, your power lift gate function, and your panic function. If you wanted to remote start the vehicle, you have to lock it, press this button twice, and she will fire right up. But now let's take a look at what we got going on here in the interior of this particular black label. So this one's been specced with the chalet theme. There are a few other themes to choose from if you're not a fan of the chalet theme. Just figured I'd point that out. But this is what the door panel looks like. So you get some brownish leather wrapping up top here. Then you get the beige leather wrapping here. You get some black accent colored stitching. You get a very nicely padded armrest. Three memory seat adjustment settings here. And then with the black label as standard, you get the 30 way perfect position seats with active motion. Active motion is your massaging seat function. So coming back over to here, again, uh, you have your three memory seat adjustment settings here, your seat controls. Here are your active motion seat controls. And then pressing on this uh, and this are for your thigh extensions down here. And then also as standard with the black label, you get the 28 speaker Revel Ultima sound system, which sounds fantastic. Hence why you get a speaker here, here, and here. Then you get your unlock and your lock functions, your power side view mirror controls. This button is going to power fold in or out your side view mirrors. This is going to restrict your passenger window privileges. You get automatic up and down windows at all four corners. Spots you can set a phone, tons of miscellaneous storage space down here. You can also set two water bottles there. Now, stepping in, you get the brushed aluminum door sill. You can see where the black label lettering is. Uh, that is illuminated, so that is definitely very nice. And then this is what the seats look like. These seats are some of the most comfortable seats that I've honestly ever sat in. So, now I'm gonna get access into the entire interior. You can watch this introduction uh, to the screens, but take a listen to the door when it closes. That is what the door sounds like when it closes. And now I'm gonna walk you throughout the entire interior. So starting up top here, you get a Opu handle. Coming down just a little bit more, you have your HVAC vent. And then this button is going to pop open and or close your power lift gate. This is for your fog lights. This is your headlight controls. And then here, this is to brighten your gauge cluster as well as your backlit buttons. This is to dim your gauge cluster as well as your backlit buttons. And then this rocker switch right here is going to either push your foot pedals away from you 
or if you press right here, this is going to bring the foot pedals towards you, which is very nice. Those foot pedals are also included with your memory seat adjustment settings. And then coming over to here, you get a power tilting and telescoping steering column. So you can bring the steering wheel towards you, push it away from you, and you can also move it up and down. That is also included with your memory seat functions here, which is definitely very nice. But now let's take a listen to the turn signal. That is what your turn signal sounds like. And now zooming back out, this is what your steering wheel looks like. Obviously the steering wheel is leather wrapped and heated. And in order to turn your heated steering wheel on, you get this split function um, screen. And then you'd press that button right there. And that is how you turn the heated steering wheel on. You do not get any uh, physical button to turn your heated steering wheel on. And just like any other vehicle, you have your horn at the center. So let's take a listen to the horn. That is what the horn sounds like. And if I close that window there, you can see <laughs> the um, vehicle is so well insulated, you can honestly barely even hear the horn when all the windows are closed. So that is pretty cool. And then you also get steering wheel mounted paddle shifters as well. And then coming to this side of the steering wheel, that is to go backwards on a track, that is to go forwards on a track, and this is your volume control knob. Coming down just a little bit more, this vehicle does come standard with adaptive cruise control with stop and go. So here are your adaptive cruise control settings. This also does come standard with blue cruise, which is what this is up top here. No, I cannot see those lights flashing here in person. That is picking up on camera due to the frame rate of the camera. But anyways, blue cruise is your hands-free driving assistant for highways. Otherwise, you would use adaptive cruise control down here, which is definitely very nice. And then you have the OK button, this toggle switch here, and that back button all of those controls are for your 12 inch digital gauge cluster which i'll get into here in a second and then coming over here this is to pick up and or hang up on a phone call this is to speak to the vehicle this is to control your head-up display system which you get as standard with the black label and if i click this media button uh, that is going to pop up your audio stuff here on the dis digital display this is going to pop up your settings on your digital display and then pressing on this nav button right here is going to pop up your point of interest stuff on your 12 inch display so i guess i might as well go throughout uh, the display now so pressing on the button back 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 i'm gonna bring you into the home screen this is what the home screen looks like so right now you can see up top here you have the compass this is the audio stuff and then that is the ambient exterior temperature this is your speedometer that's your digital speedometer readout this is like your, for your lane keeping system uh, basically driver assistant stuff and then you have your trip one information here that's letting me know that the vehicle is low on fuel that is the fuel range this is the fuel gauge you can see the arrow pointing to the left of that uh, gas pump that means you fill the vehicle up on the left hand side and then this is what drive mode we are currently in this is your transmission status stuff right now we are also in four-wheel drive automatic this is your odometer this is your coolant temperature gauge uh, and then you have some driver assistance stuff down there now again to go throughout this screen um, you have this toggle switch here so right now if I toggled up that is my calm screen if I toggle down that is my trip one information stuff I'll go down trip two fuel economy stuff then i got my tire pressure stuff and uh it's letting me know who is buckled and who is not buckled when in the calm screen all of the other stuff other than the um uh, media stuff the fuel range and the digital speedometer readout are displayed now obviously uh, if i press the head up display button it's going to pop up the head up display stuff so i can either turn the head up display on or off by clicking on that now the head up display is off I can turn it back on and then I can also go into the head display menu where I can adjust the brightness, the position, and or the content that is displayed. So right now, uh, miles to empty, time and temperature are displayed as is the driver assistant stuff. So that's all you can display. And then when it comes to the positioning of it, you can adjust the vertical position and then also the rotation of it like this. So that is what you can do with that. And then if I press this settings button, you can go into display setup and you can adjust what you can see right there. Then you can see your oil life, your neutral toe stuff. So you can flat toe this behind a RV if that is what you wanted to do. Uh, and then you can also again pop up your point of interest stuff also on this display. And that's kind of about it for the display here. Coming up top here again, you do get the head-up display as standard. And right now the head-up display is displaying the time and the temperature. It's also displaying the digital speedometer readout, the transmission status stuff, 
and the fuel range. I love all the different displays there. It's like minimalistic, but it also displays exactly what you want it to, but not too much stuff. So I like how it is, um, you know, whatever it's set up right now. And then obviously you get a leather wrap dash here with the black label, a speaker right there for your Revel Ultima sound system. You also get this beautiful suede headliner that feels very, very fancy. Coming over to here, you can see your push button, start button, your trailer brake controller, or this is your trailer brake controller. This is your pro trailer backup assist. So basically this is going to help you back up a trailer if you don't know how to back up a trailer. Probably shouldn't be towing a trailer if you don't know how to back one up. But anyways, sorry, I gotta throw a little shade right there. But coming over to here, this is your Sync 4 13.2 inch infotainment system with built-in navigation and wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto connectivity. Um, so if I go over to here, this is what your audio screen looks like. You have all of your shortcut buttons at the bottom of the screen. So this is going to shortcut me into my Apple CarPlay stuff, shortcut me into my navigation stuff. You also have your different favorite stuff. So you can select your favorite all throughout there. You can go in between your different apps, wireless CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. You can go in between your different settings here. So this is one of your setting screens. This is your secondary setting screen. And then that is your third setting screen. If I go over to here, this is the one that I normally will show. Um, so these are all of your different vehicle settings throughout here. You can take a look at all of those different things. Um, but yeah, that is kind of about it for the setting screen. Then you can also go in between your different vehicle features. You can go in between your driver assistance features. I always like to highlight this. So these are all of your different driver assistance features. You can pause your screen and take a look at all of them. But let's say you don't know what one of them is. You can press that I right there and basically it is going to display and tell you what the uh, system is that you don't know what it is. It's basically gonna give you a description of it. Uh, and then you can go between all of these different things here. Again, you get your time, you get your temperature over there. This is a split screen setup. So right now the secondary screen is your climate control screen. If I swipe down, then you get your audio stuff, you get your navigation stuff. Then you get your phone stuff, trip one stuff, fuel economy stuff, and then back to your climate stuff. I would leave it on the climate screen uh, because it just gives you easy access to turn on your heated steering wheel. Again, you cannot turn your heated steering wheel on with any physical button because there's not a physical button for your heated steering wheel. But then you get two HVAC vents. Clicking on this is gonna pop up your 360 degree view camera system as well as your front camera. Then you got your hazard button there. You get your push button transmission, push to go into all of these different gears here. And then this is your volume control knob, your tuning control knob. Then if I come over to here, this is your uh, button to turn the audio system to mute on or off. Then that is to go backwards on a track. That is to go forwards on a track. That is going to lock your uh, tri-zone climate control for your, basically the climate zone back here is going to be locked. Then that lets you know if your passenger airbag is on or off. You have your um, climate control stack that is physical controls right here. If you press this menu button, that is going to pop up your climate menu throughout the screen. And you can also turn on or off the heated steering wheel right there. Coming down just a little bit more, you get a USB uh, A port, you get a USB C port, you get a wireless charging pad down in there. You can also close that off if you wanted to. But not, last but not least, you also get a 12 volt power outlet down in there as well. This is a spot you could set your key fob. You get two cup holders here. You get your electronic parking brake. This is going to turn the auto stop start system off or on. Auto hold is a feature in which, you know, let's say you're stuck in traffic, tired of holding your foot down on your brake yourself. If you press that, the vehicle will hold you in place by itself with its braking system. And then you also do get active park assist. So if you press on that, it will park you into a parallel or a perpendicular parking spot. And then last but not least, this is your drive mode selector. You can go between your different drive modes. Right now we are in normal mode. So if I start in normal mode, you get normal mode, normal four x four auto, slippery mode, uh, deep conditions. Then you have your slow climb. And if I go back over to here, you also have your conserve mode and your excite mode. Excite is basically your sport mode, all controlled by this knob here. Then you get two nicely padded armrests. If I open this up, you get a divider in here. You also get a 12 volt power outlet and quite a bit of storage space down in that center console. You can fit exactly what you need to down in here. Uh, but yeah, closing that back up, 
You also get a little bit of storage space down here that is passed through storage space to the passenger side. And now I'm gonna switch out my SD card for a new one. Give me one second. All right, new SD card in. Up top here, you get your auto dimming rear view mirror. And then obviously both of your reading lights up top here are LED. This is your instant dome light on button. Uh, this button, basically you turn them on, that button's gonna turn them back off. Then this is whether you want the lights to turn on or not when you open up the doors. You get a panoramic roof as standard with this vehicle. Um, and then these are your shade controls for the panoramic roof. And then if I press this right here, that is basically going to put the headrests down in the third row. That is what that button does right there. And then if you want to turn your reading lights on individually, all you got to do is touch the light and the light will turn on. And then flipping this down, you get that mirror for all of your passengers. And then all the way up top here, if you press on that, that is where you will set your sunglasses. You obviously get a universal garage door opener. Then you get a vanity mirror with two vanity lights and then this visor also does slide forwards and backwards depending on where the sun is shining. Uh, obviously you get a speaker here, you get another speaker on that side. You may notice the passenger gets a no poop handle but the driver does not get a no poop handle. Um, and then coming over to here, this is what the passenger side looks like. You get a lockable lower glove box with a decent amount of storage space in the glove box, but not a ton of storage space in the glove box, considering the size of the uh, SUV. And then that's kind of about it for what we got going on here in these front seats. So um, now I'm gonna go over a couple of things that I figured you might wanna know. So as standard, you get the 28 speaker Revel Ultima sound system, the 30 way perfect position seats with active motion, which is the massaging function. You also get heated and ventilated front seats with three levels of adjustability as well as a heated steering wheel so um, here are your heated and your ventilated front seats both again get three levels of adjustability you also get adaptive cruise control stop and go you get blue cruise you get the head-up display the active park assistant the tri-zone climate control system um, and then now i'm going to throw the entire window sticker on screen i did want to mention or highlight one feature that i haven't highlighted yet because we're not there yet um, is the $625 second row massage heated and ventilated seats with the console. Um, so basically I'll get into that here in a second, but now I'm gonna highlight the MSRP. So the MSRP of the way that this particular 2024 Navigator Black Label Special Edition is spec'd is $123,515. That is a ton of money. But this is a really nice SUV, you know what I mean? And comparing this to the Escalade, the prices are pretty on par. You know, they're very similar to each other. These things are just crazy expensive now, but they are very comfortable. You get a ton of stuff with them, but they are very, very expensive. I do want to show you what we got going on in the rear seats before moving into the driving portion of the video. So taking a look at what we got going on back here, you get some leather wrapping here, you get leather wrapping here, you get a speaker, automatic up and down second row window as mentioned. So it goes all the way down. Again, it does go automatic up as well. The Escalades for some reason recently have not been having the automatic up, but they have the automatic down. A little bit of storage space here, some more down there, a spot you could set a water bottle. This is what these second row seats look like. Stepping on into these second row seats, up top here, you get your HVAC vent, you get an Opu panel, you get a jacket holder and a um, dome light. Another Opu panel here for your B pillar. Seat back pocket behind the driver's seat. You also get a seat back pocket behind the passenger seat. And then if you come down to here, you have these controls and basically this is going to open up your panoramic roof shade. And then the button to the right of that or left of that is going to close the panoramic roof shade. And then down here, you get two USB-C ports. On this side, you get a 150 watt household, or excuse me, yeah, 150 watt household power outlet. And then you get a 12 volt power outlet in between the two. And if I press on that, you get two cup holders down there. Tons and tons of knee and leg room. Tons and tons of headroom as well. Um, and then coming over to here, you get the two cup holders. You get a little bit of storage space down here. And then this is what you get for the $625. You get the massaging seat function for the left or the right. Then you get the um, seat function, heated and ventilated seats. You can control the tri-zone climate control from this system. You can also go into your audio stuff and or your different settings throughout here as well. Then you get a nicely padded armrest here. You can open this thing up and you get a ton of storage space down in that console. 
closing that back up. Um, I am five foot nine and I am adjusted behind myself. So I've got plenty of knee and leg room. And when it comes to headroom, I actually think I would have should have a little bit more headroom. Uh, but again, I can recline my seat and then I've got, you know, a ton of headroom. So that's not really that big of an issue. Uh, but I do want to show you what we got going on here in the third row seat. So if I press this button, that gives me easy access to slide that seat forward. And then this is what these third row seats look like. They follow along with the chalet theme. And then let's see back here. Are these seats comfortable? Okay, these seats are actually some of the most comfortable third row seats that I have ever sat in. Very nice padding. Um, you have your seat controls here. You can move the seat forward. You can also recline the seat by pressing on that button there. You get a USB-A port, two cup holders, a little bit of storage base, some more storage base. And I love how I can recline these seats with these buttons here. And I can also bring them up as well. All electric, very nice. Then you also get a uh, dry cleaning hook here. You get the same thing on that side. You get the two HVAC vents as well as the dome light. And then you can see still quite a bit of knee and leg room back here. So let's see, you know, still comfortable. You know, I've got enough room back here that I think I could do a road trip. But, um, you know, we've talked about the exterior. We talked about the performance and now we've talked about what's going on here in the interior of this thing. So I want to see what this thing's like to drive as I'm assuming you guys do as well. So. I'll see you guys in the driver's seat. All right, now on to the driving portion of the video. Take a listen. Handling. Now it does not handle as well as the Escalade, but I feel like it goes over bumps better than the Escalade. So it doesn't handle as well, but I feel like it's just a little bit smoother when it comes to bumps and stuff like that, uh, which it makes sense. So this thing is so comfortable. I saw a Raptor in the same exact spot last time I did a video uh, around here. Anyways, uh, it is super comfortable. You know, these seats are very, very comfortable. What the one thing about the perfect position seats is that it may take you a little bit of time to find your perfect position. And it's also almost because it's like too adjustable so it takes a little bit of time to find you know that perfect position granted once you find that perfect position they're some of the most comfortable seats you could get really on the market but it's just going to take you a little bit of time to find your perfect perfect position considering the amount of adjustability that you get with the seats if that makes sense so um this thing just it will eat up miles so if you do road trips often with your family this is a great vehicle, obviously, if you have the money for it, you know what I mean? If you're looking at a vehicle at this price point, it is super, super nice. Now, when it comes to looks wise, you know, that is all subjective between this and the Escalade. I feel like I almost like the way that the Escalade looks better. Um, that all comes down to personal preference. That's just the way that I feel. However, this thing gets better fuel economy than the Escalade. This thing can tow more than the Escalade and it's more powerful than the Escalade. So when it comes to that stuff, this is better than the Escalade when it comes to the fuel. What's that sound? Somebody's ripping up. You hear that? <laughs> I think it's that Mercedes there. But um, yeah, so it's more powerful than the Escalade. Um, it can tow more than the Escalade and it gets better fuel economy than the Escalade. So it's really all about, you know, what you are looking for in a vehicle. Um, so if you want the power, you want the towing, you want the comfort, well, this might be the one for you to get, but the Escalade is also very comfortable. Now, here's a nice little acceleration. It's quick. And one thing that I do like about the not an eco boost uh, but it is basically an eco boost is that when you're getting on it and you have the windows down and you know you're just kind of rolling into it but getting on it you can hear the turbo really start to whistle um you know probably around like 3000 rpm i don't know what the or probably like 2500 rpm i don't know what the exact rpm is because there's no tack here um but I, I do like to listen to a little bit of that turbo whistle now moving into the head-up display system I am a big fan of the head-up display system with this thing because it displays exactly what you want to see you know what I'm saying it doesn't display too much it doesn't display too little it displays like the perfect amount but then 
exactly what you want to see as well so i definitely appreciate that and then also you know i've experienced a few revel sound systems in my day and i gotta say you know 50 percent of the time they don't sound great but the ultima sound systems recently i just did a video with a nautilus the other day i'm about to do a video with another nautilus but i also did a video obviously with this here today the revel ultima sound system sounds fantastic it's got great bass great clarity and i'm a big fan of the way that it sounds so here's another little acceleration for you So this thing has plenty, plenty of power. You know, you're not gonna be wanting any or needing any more power than what this thing gives you. And if you do need a little bit more power, there's always the Escalade V. So, uh, you know, if this doesn't suit your fancy, um, you know, with how big it is and then how fuel efficient or no, how quick it is, there's the Escalade V. It's gonna cost you about 30 grand more, but then you're getting almost 700 horsepower. So. Here's another acceleration, floored. It's got the get up. Believe me, it's got the get up. It's got the comfort. And I'm telling you, you could be literally cruising this thing down the highway at 90 miles an hour and it would feel like you're going 60. That is how comfortable this thing is. You can have everybody in your family in this thing, do a road trip, you know, that's six, seven hours, and I think everybody would still be comfortable after that seven hour road trip, especially the people in the first and the second row when you get the massaging second row seat. So it's just a great vehicle. I don't think you can get massaging seats in the second row in the Escalade, so that's another sales point to the Navigator. Um, so man this thing is just ultra ultra comfortable ultra quick uh it's got that great low end torque the sound system is great it gives you pretty much all the features you could ever want on a vehicle i mean it's not lacking feature in the feature department uh in any feature that i can think of off the top of my head it's got hands-free driving for when you're on the highway it's got adaptive cruise control it's, uh you know it's got pretty much all the safety features that you can want or think of getting on a vehicle so Overall, it is a very, very nice vehicle. It's just very, very pricey. But, you know, if you're looking at an Escalade, you're looking at this, they're in the same ballpark. So that's it for today's video. If you guys did enjoy the video, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button. I'm on my journey to 100,000 subscribers and I cannot reach my goal without your support. So if you enjoy the video, if you learned anything from the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. That helps me out big time. Um, but again, that is it for today's video. I will catch you all in the next one. Peace.